Cable management, how you can get in and out of the enclosure is very, very important. Most common practices we've seen is cabling overhead and power under floor, uh, separating the two. Cable overhead because they're trying to keep that under the floor air pressure moving with big bundles of cables and raceway underneath the floor, you can certainly impede airflow. If you are running cabling under the floor, it's good to be parallel to the rows of the enclosure as opposed to perpendicular. So when the crack unit's throwing out cold air, it's not being blocked and the end of the row starves. So um, common practice has been cabling up above and power below. Uh, grounding locations are important. We're going to continue that in a few minutes here. Um, server enclosure cable management. Some of this is specific to us, which we can't really talk about, but I do want to point out a couple things, problems and issues that we have seen that are important. I don't know how well you can see the slide, but this would be our vertical cable troughs, and this is where a PDU mounts. Most of the rails are mounted to a front and rear horizontal support. A lot of them continue all the way to the back of the enclosure. So when I go to mount this PDU that might be four inches deep or three inches, I'm putting it on this bracket, which would impede me there. If you notice in this case, this enclosure, the bracket stops and there's a lot more room. There's a bigger cavity back here. Something to consider. So if you did the math, 30 inch wide cabin, PDU's four inches, okay, I should have room for my mounting. What you're not considering is where that PDU or cable management mounts. Some of the uh, finger duct cable managements are common and they'll go in anybody's cabinet. Again, same issue, they're at three, four inches, they won't fit because of how the cabinet is designed. Someone did a good job designing that. <coughs> okay, cable management, again, this is a, the most important thing about this, I think uh, you need to know are the universal uh, PDU brackets. Most people have those. This will mount anybody's PDU. It's called the button mounting. You just stick the button in the hole in the center and pull it down. It's obviously reversible. In, our, in this case, um, cable troughs can go in there too. This is very, very important. Three by three inch cable duct is approximately 60 Cat6 cables. That's the most common question we get asked is, okay, I've got so many drops in this enclosure, whatever, or how much cable management do I need? To be honest, I don't know. I've never really uh, networked a cabinet, and I don't install cabinets. But we sell them, but that is important information that we use pretty often. So uh, you might want to make note of that number because we do use that pretty often. Again, you can see how that um, recess in the back of this enclosure is helpful for mounting equipment. Grounding, uh, very, very, very confusing. Uh, we get more questions and problems on this than anything. Most specs written say, cabinet must be grounded. Okay, easy to do. The blue picture in the top right shows you a grounded door to a grounding point in the top of the cabinet. Notice the rails are black, which means they're powder coated. Okay, everybody's rail has to be coated. Okay, you can't have bare steel, so it might be zinc plated, which we can go over that whisker thing later, uh, or it's powder coated. Once you've grounded the cabinet and you mount the equipment to the powder coated rails, there is no more ground. Okay, the cabinet is grounded, but the equipment to the rails is not grounded. So the confusion comes up, um, in fact we have some Cisco paperwork here, they're saying that they want their equipment grounded to an earth ground. What we can do, or what recommended, is a separate green or a separate vertical bus bar or horizontal. On this, there are cap holes, and you run little green leads from here to the green grounding screw on the equipment. You can rely on the plug that has a ground, but if you read the directions from us manufacturers, they call for a ground, earth ground, to their equipment. So if you grounded the cabinet, you have not grounded the equipment. So we've had a lot of confusion there, and a lot of people's warranties were nullified. And they said, oh no, it's grounded, it's grounded. 
Now you've only grounded the cabinet, so I don't know if you have any questions on that, but best common practice is that is, is a separate earth ground bus bar with a green lead directly to the ground screw. Any questions on that? You don't have a conductive powder coat paint? No. Not that's recommended by the, well, some of those switches and on the Cisco 7000 series is, can be $100,000. So we like to see a damn good ground on that thing. <laughs> okay, I don't want to call on that one. So there, I, I, no one's powder coat, I think, is conductive enough that they're going to recommend uh, for something of that, that cost. Okay. Back to the Cisco thing. This is a picture actually of, of a CX Tech customer's enclosure. I'm not sure why this exists, but you notice all the cabling, that turquoise color, goes to the right side of the uh, enclosure. That is the air intake, okay? That meets Cisco's requirements. The fans are actually right here. Okay, the handle, you pull the fans out. So they don't want any cabling this way. So all the cabling goes this way, and that is the air intake. Not the most efficient. So that's why we're recommending 30-inch wide enclosures to give as much air space there as we can. We do a lot with brush grommet, where if this is looking down on top of the cabinet, air intake does come in here, and then around where we have no brush grommet, exhaust it out, we brush the front so it exhausts out like that. So we, we do, uh, we are able to manage the flow. The most common mistake that we have seen is in the data center, okay, we know that the switch is gonna blow right to left. The most common mistake is putting the one on the right lower, the one next to it higher, and then higher. What you're doing is blowing hot air up into this one, out into that one. Best practice would be start on the right higher and work your way lower so the one on the right is blowing out the one in the center is blowing out the top and you're always blowing hot air up you're not blowing into the one next to you so you should end up like this see the head nodding so yeah best practices um, that's what we see a lot of and it's amazing how many times you see it the other way and they're wondering why these switches are heating up so um, best practices has taught us that And now we're back to Bill. All right. Well, uh, you know, talking about uh, cable management and some of the other uh, accessories, now we can kind of get into some of the, the cooling accessories uh, along with the enclosure with inside the data center. Uh, and some of the uh, products uh, is just basically managing the airflow. Uh, and what we have is a, a very cost-efficient uh, uh, piece of product uh, that actually sits in the bottom of the enclosure. It manages the available conditioned air by directing and diverting the, to the front of the equipment mounted within the enclosure. And it also has an adjustability aperture for it. Uh, it does not interfere with the rear bottom cable access on the 42 and 48 inch deep enclosures. So uh, on our enclosures, we have a rear cable access separate than the air intake as well. So you can still have all your cable access from under the floor using the brush grommet, the floor grommets, and then you still have your air coming from underneath the enclosure. So this kind of explains it a little bit better. This is a cross section to where uh, this is the, the, the product. Underneath the brace floor, typically 60 to 65. Conditioned air actually that's um, a little high. Sometimes you see 55 in the 50s. So what we're trying to do is dropping the air intake uh, temperature and making sure, just getting it to be where it needs to be. Pardon me. So, the, so the air is actually coming through the bottom of the enclosure. It's now directed between the meshed front door and the air uh, intake of the equipment, but it's within inside the enclosure. So it manages the airflow from the raised floor, directs the flow of conditioned air towards the front of the equipment, and maximizes the efficiency of the cracking. 